Hi, I have recently released a new Bunnymod XT version with two major improvements to the TES editor. The first is the ability to use two game instances to get a fully accurate simulated path in the TES editor. And the second one is the camera editor with global smoothing. In this video I'll show you how to use them. Let's start with two game instances. If you load your TES and open the editor in the very beginning, you will see that the player's path quickly diverges from what will really happen during playback. This happens due to imperfections in prediction. Bunnymod XT can now fix it by running the script in a second game instance to see what really happens. Let's see how to set this up. Unfortunately, the official Steam API DLL has a bug when running two game instances, which will crash the game after a few seconds. You'll have to find, a, let's say, an alternative Steam API and replace the one in the Half-Life folder. You can restore the official Steam API later by verifying the integrity of game files in Steam. For existing tasks, there is one preparation step we have to do. Your starting bind will look like map something or load something, followed by bxt task load script. Copy this first part and put it in the HL task script as a load command line, which goes above the frames line. When you load the task, it will run this command before starting the task. Now delete the command from your starting bind. You should be able to run the task using just bxt task load script. Next, simply start Half-Life a second time. On Windows, you have to start it through injector.exe, otherwise it won't work. Type bxt task become simulator client and switch back to the first Half-Life. You will see that the path is now correct. When you edit the path, you will see that at first the line is dim. This represents regular prediction which may be inaccurate. When the second game catches up, the path will become bright, which represents the fully accurate player path. Since the path comes from running the test for real in the second game, it also correctly handles entities such as health boosters and moving doors, teleport triggers and everything else. Needless to say, it doesn't desync, so with two games you can work on much longer parts of the test at once. By the way, in case you accidentally disable the test editor without saving the script, BXT now saves a backup file before any destructive action, which you can use to restore your work. Now let's check out the camera editor. It lets you smooth the camera movement and change where the player is looking. Bind two keys to enabling and disabling the camera editor and change your BXT task editor insert point bind to have a plus symbol in front. It will behave exactly the same as before, but it's needed for the camera editor. You may have noticed little blue lines along the path. They show where the player is looking on that frame, and in the regular task editor mode, they appear sparsely, or when the camera angle suddenly changes. If we enable the camera editor, we'll see these camera angle lines for every single frame of the test. This way we can have a good idea where the player is looking. Let's start with the global smoothing, which is the simplest and the most important operation. Note how segments where the camera angle is changing are colored blue, while the segments where the camera angle stays the same are colored green. Every blue segment surrounded by green segments on both sides can be smoothed with BXT Task Editor Apply Smoothing. It is displayed as a yellow line. Remember to do it only once and only after finishing all other changes to the segment, and your tests will look great. The amount of smoothing can be controlled with BXT Test Editor Apply Smoothing over S, which is a value in seconds. The larger the value, the more smoothing you get. Now let's look at the rest of the camera editor's functionality. Pressing BXT Test Editor Insert Point will insert a target your velocity lock line into the script. This line restores the normal camera behavior after any prior changes. If we hold the right mouse button, we will be able to look from the player's perspective on this frame and change the yaw angle. The color of the line becomes teal, indicating that this is now a constant target yaw line. Notice how subsequent frames now also face the same direction. We have made a short segment where the player is facing into a set direction. Sudden camera changes don't look good though. Thankfully, there is a way to smoothly change the angle over a period of time. Instead of tapping BXC Task Editor Insert Point, hold the button and drag the mouse. This creates a gradual camera change segment indicated by the arrows on its ends. The red line at the beginning shows the initial angle, which is the player's angle at that moment and cannot be edited. The yellow line at the end shows the final angle and can be changed by holding the right mouse button. 
You can also drag either end of the segment to move it. Our camera now smoothly changes into the constant angle, however the transition back is still sudden. There is an easy way to fix that. Press insert once to add a line that returns the camera back to normal, then press and hold insert again without moving the mouse. Now you can drag out a camera transition that goes back to normal. We've got a smooth camera change to the angle that we've set and back. So far we've been manipulating the target yaw angle, which is where the player looks during vectorial strafing. For camera transitions, you can use BXT Task Editor Set Change Type to make them manipulate regular yaw or pitch instead. You can overlap two camera transitions to change both yaw and pitch at the same time. This concludes this update video. In summary, use two games to get accurate path in the editor and apply global smoothing to every turn using the camera editor. I wish you a fun testing experience. See you next time!